from Raleigh, North Carolina. Thanks. Uh, th thanks, Dr. Silver. Actually, I'm from Ohio, like you, I, I believe, uh, uh, from Cleveland. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the program committee for inviting me. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's an intimidating audience of people, many of whom trained me. So if I said something wrong, it's your fault. Uh, <laughs> these are my uh, relevant disclosures. So we're going to talk very briefly. There have been several uh, talks in this uh, meeting about renal stenting, which uh, is something that's actually uh, re increasing in my practice because we're a renal denervation site, and we find a lot of renal artery atherosclerosis in the workup for that. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about the goals for renal re revascularization. Uh, we'll talk about why the data are confusing, whether there's new guidelines that might be helpful. Uh, we'll talk about stenosis assessment, which uh, some of our surgical partners don't do uh, as much as we do. Uh, and then I know Dr. Rosenfield addressed earlier today whether there may be an AUC uh, that would help us with the indications for revascularization. We'll allude to that. And then we'll talk a little bit about some technical uh, and practical approaches to doing renal intervention. And uh, obviously, there'll be hopefully some time for discussion. So always, we'll start with a case. Uh, it's a 72-year-old woman that I uh, first met this past fall. Uh, she has coronary disease and a three-vessel bypass. Uh, several years ago, who had been admitted with uh, shortness of breath, which was in retrospect probably heart failure, three times in the past 12 months. First in March, which was billed as a COPD exacerbation, uh, which was curiously treated by diuresis. Uh, and then again in October, uh, with again another COPD ex exacerbation treated with diuresis. Uh, and then in, in November, she developed rapid atrial flutter uh, and had so called flash pulmonary edema and was admitted to uh, our center. Uh, where she was initially on a medical service, uh, and uh, they got an echo that showed she had normal ejection fraction, so they called it HEFPEF, uh, diuresed her, and then referred her to electrophysiology for an AF abla a flutter ablation. Uh, Post-procedure, uh, she had three trips back and forth to the medical ICU each time with flash pulmonary edema, uh, and then uh, I was luck luckily uh, one of our fellows got involved in the cardiology, uh, was consulted, and. Uh, uh, no further workup was undertaken. This is her past medical history, fairly typical of many of the patients that we take care of. Her medical therapy was reasonable. She was on aspirin and warfarin, insulin and diclomepiride for her diabetes, torzomide because of difficulty with diuresis, Coreg at a max uh, dose for her weight, lisinopril, which she could not tolerate at higher doses, and statins and amiodarone since her ablation. Um, she, on exam, had bilateral uh, elevations of her blood pressure that were symmetric, a little bit of jugular venous distension, an S4 gallop, and, and a possible abdominal brewery with trace pedal edema. Uh, and this was a renal artery duplex ultrasound, which is what our fellow had recommended. Uh, and this is her right and her left.